Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll make a start. We'll just uh, go around and introduce ourselves, and then uh, we'll get our solicitor to uh, lay out the procedure for this morning. Um, can I just remind everybody, when you're speaking, you have a microphone in front of you. Uh, if you can just press the button when you speak and turn it off once you stop speaking. Please, this is just for our webcasting. Uh, so my name is Councillor Abdul Qayyub, Councillor for Perth Park Ward in Sheffield, and I'm chair of this uh, subcommittee. And my right, my colleague. I'm, I'm Councillor Henry Notted, member for Hillsborough Ward and member of the committee. I am Councillor Jolton, Councillor for Doran Totley, and member of the committee. Good morning, Samantha Von Legal Advisor to the subcommittee. Good morning, I'm Mitchell Wibley, also a legal advisor to the subcommittee. I'm John Cooper from Democratic Services. Good morning, my name is Masood Ibrahimi, I'm the owner of 418 so. Good morning everyone, my name is Azhar Iqbal, uh, I'm a barrister and representing here today as a solicitor for uh, Mr Ibrahimi. Uh, good morning, I'm Vivian Smith, Secretary of Botanical Gate Community Association, representing the association. Good morning, uh, Carol Leonardo. I'm, uh, um, I'm living in Thompson Road, one of the roads affected by this potential. My name is Shinra Finch. I'm from the Licensing Service, and I'll be presenting the report today. Okay, thank you. Uh, before I ask um, our solicitor to, uh, uh, to let us know what the procedure is this morning, I'm just going to ask Joanne to give us some housekeeping rules. Thank you, Chair. In the event of the fire alarm sounding, please take instruction from staff and stewards. The assembly point is at Tudor Square. Please can I request everyone to switch mobile devices to silent mode so as not to disturb the conduct of the meeting. The meeting today will be webcast and the recording will also be available for people to view later through the Council's website. It is also possible that Sheffield Live TV will record and rebroadcast this meeting. Whatever the meeting is open to the public, photography, video and sound recording of the proceedings is permitted. However, the Chair has discretion to withdraw or suspend this permission, for example, if the recording is disrupting the conduct of the meeting or is being undertaken in a manner which could capture personal information or in the event that a member of the public participating in a meeting objects to being recorded. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, uh, Sam, if you can just lay out the procedure for this morning. Yes, thank you, Chair. Can I just check everyone's got a copy of the papers or can see some? We've got some extras if you... If you want a hard copy, you're good. So the procedure's right at the back of the pack. Uh, it starts at page 49. So the licensing officer, who's Shimla this morning, will introduce the report. If there are any questions concerning the report, that's the time for those to be raised by members and other parties present. We haven't got any representatives for responsible authorities present, given that conditions have been agreed and they've therefore been withdrawn. So what we'll do, we'll head over to the local residents first to outline their representations and just to expand on what's been written in the report. With the leave of the chair, <coughs> sorry, I knew that was going to happen, the applicant can ask questions of you and members and officers will also probably have a couple of questions for you as well. We'll then head over to the applicant to detail the application, provide clarification on the application and respond to representations <coughs> made both written within the report and orally here at the hearing today. Again, members and officers can ask the applicant questions and with the leave of the chair, residents can also ask questions as well if they've got any. We'll then turn over to the applicant just to sum up the application, just to leave us with any final thoughts before we take the options from Schindler, which are also detailed within the report. We'll then go into private session while members take legal advice and consider the application. So we'll just ask you guys to wait outside and then if you want to hang around, we can invite you back in and give the decision a little bit later on today. Uh, the decision of the licensing committee will be given in accordance with the requirements of the Licensing Act 2003 and regulations made thereunder. Any time during the hearing members can request legal advice which we can either do in open session as we are now or private where we just ask you to pop outside. We'll have a discussion and when you come back in we'll report back what was discussed. And as Joanne said it is a public hearing this morning so we are being live webcast and recorded as we speak. Um, obviously, there's no one else present in the room at this time other than the parties to the hearing. And that's everything. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, over to our licensed officer. Produce a report, please. Chair. This report is to consider an application for the variation of a premises license under the Licensing Act. The premises runs as a convenience store with off sales of alcohol from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. some days a week. The application requests the off sales are permitted 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No further steps have been detailed in Section M of the application in promoting the four licensing objectives with the requested extended hours. A copy of the current premises license is attached at Appendix B, which details the current times and conditions imposed. During the consultation period, the applicant has agreed conditions with South Yorkshire Police regarding CCTV and staff training. Full details of the agreed conditions are attached at Appendix C. The variation application has been referred to the licensing subcommittee due to 13 unresolved objections from local residents. Copies of these objections are attached at Appendix D of the report. The applicant and the objectors have been invited to attend the hearing. Copies of the front pages of the notices are attached at the report at Appendix E. There are no specific financial implications arising from this application. However, additional costs may be incurred should the matter go to appeal. The legal position is detailed in paragraph five of the report and it's recommended that members carefully consider the representations made and take such steps as a subcommittee consider appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives. Thank you. Any questions on the report from anybody? No? Okay. Is it next time? Is it the? Yes. Um, as we live nearby, we live um, off Eccleshall Road in a community which is very mixed and has lots of families and all sorts of, and older people like me and everything in between. And we live in an area where noise echoes very easily along the terrace streets. Um, and we also live in an area where there are plenty of places that sell or alcohol in various ways. And we suffer the consequences of that, which means you get up in the morning to find bottles outside your house, in your garden, and various other bodily fluids we won't discuss. And we have to clear it up. We have regular litter picks to clear up the mess. Um, and some people don't even join the regular litter picks. They just go out and do it. But that's not really our role, is it? And we don't want that anymore. You can buy alcohol actually further up the road in the spa till all hours because they've got 24-hour license. But having spoken to them, we know very well that some nights they have to lock the doors to not allow anybody in because there's such <coughs> disruptive behaviour going on by the people who aren't entirely sober at the time. And that means, and they've had a licence, I don't know, probably longer than I've been alive, so it's a historic one. We don't need another one. We don't need more mess than that. We don't need more noise. If people are buying alcohol after 11 o'clock, surely they're not entirely sober. And therefore, they're not going to be behaving in the ways your rules set out. They are not, they're more likely to cause crime, antisocial behaviour or disorder. And therefore, there doesn't seem any reason for this to happen and for us to be affected. And it's not just us, it's actually the community station next to us as well. So we don't think there is a need for this. We don't think we want that kind of noise and disruption. We would really prefer to keep the licence to 11 o'clock, especially as it's asked for seven days a week. If people want to drink alcohol, surely they can be a little better prepared, especially as we know this, this shop sells high-end alcohol and Cuban cigars. So I wouldn't have thought those sorts of people would be buying alcohol at 3 o'clock in the morning. The other issue is probably um, the children. There's a bus stop not far away where children queue to go to school. I don't know whether they would be affected by the vapes that have been sold there. And that's another issue one of our members has brought up. And so there is the noise, there's the disruption, there's the litter, 
there's the mess, there's the inconvenience, all of those things we find difficult. The other experience we've had is sadly, the council does not have enough money to do very little. And therefore, if conditions are placed on this, which involve somebody monitoring it, I would be very impressed if it happens because you can't do it. You can't monitor things because you just physically haven't got the money or the capacity or the people. It's not a complaint. I wish you had more, but it's, it's a fact of life. You know that, you know, when you apply for this, I think your email says, we may respond, our response may take longer due to problems with staffing. So don't put any conditions on this, which means one of your staff has got to go and check it because that's not going to happen. So I think at the moment, that's my main thing I wanted to say. On behalf of all the people who have objected and the, at our last gathering, over 100 souls. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course, I'm part of... <coughs> Sorry. Of course, I'm part of these 100 houses that we represent. Uh, I think it's important to underline that. It's not only me <coughs> and Vivian here. Um, we live in a nice area, frankly, uh, a bit let down. Uh, the antisocial behavior, uh, we, c we cannot take it anymore. We've reached a level where really it needs to stop. Um, we're in contact with universities uh, to make sure that our nights are not disturbed. Um, uh, some of the, uh, the neighbors are doctors, uh, nurses who need to work. Uh, opening seven days per week, 24 hours a day, to sell alcohol because, like they say, they can't make enough money. I'm sorry, you can't disturb over 100 souls because you need to make money. Just go and open somewhere else because this is frankly, uh, we, we, are, we are frankly, we're shocked about this uh, seven, uh, 24 hours a day. We can't take it anymore. Uh, in particular, my issue is that I need and I want to sleep during the night. And the antisocial behavior caused by drunkenness and things like that, now we can't take it anymore. So from this side, we urge to keep the license as they are, which we think is enough for the area, uh, considering that there are no uh, discotheques or things like that. Yeah, so there is really no need to drink all this of 24 hours a day. Thank you very much. That's my position. Thank you. I'm just going to ask if uh, any of my colleagues have any questions so far. No. no. Uh, before I, I ask the applicant representative, can I just ask one question? Um, you mentioned um, another facility, 24-hour facility. Uh, how far away is that from the, the premises in question? Roughly. Two hundred meters, less than one minute by by foot. But it has been there an awful long time, and you can't change a license, can you? So. Okay. Um, does the applicant have any questions so far? Yes. Sir. <laughs> Sorry. Um, have you had any issues with this premises so far since they've been operating? I know it's sort of hard to distinguish when. There's quite a few different premises, but I think it is impossible to distinguish when there's different premises. Um, you know, there's a there's a bar opposite. There's a bar about four houses down, four spaces down. Um, there's other. There is Sainsbury's next to them. Hmm? Sainsbury's as well. Next and to there's them. a Sainsbury's two doors away that sells alcohol till eleven. And considered applying for a twenty-four hour license and chose not to because of the problems it causes. They have enough problems with theft as it is, so, as I know, I've spoken to them. So, no, you can't distinguish whether it's this shop or anybody else's, but you could after 11 o'clock, but I'd rather you, we didn't test that. So, you sort of referred to the, the litter and the antisocial behaviour and the nuisance that you're experiencing currently. Is that, is there sort of a clear end to that at around 11, half 11, or does it carry on? It totally depends on the people. Um, 
I can't imagine. So we do have people who have parties all night. Is that enough to say? They don't do it every night. But if there's 100 students in our area and they all have a 21st birthday, that's 100 days a year. Um, yeah, no, it's enough it, said. Yeah, it's just I think sometimes, I think down in Kellam Island, you can sort of see that clear split as soon as it sort of reaches 11, half 11, everyone disperses and goes elsewhere. But because I guess if you've got quite a mix of premises, it, it's sort of ongoing. But your position would be that if this were to open later, those issues would be worsened for longer. Is, would that be fair to say? Yes. <coughs> and also, what precedent are you setting for all the other premises on the street? And that would be impossible. We are not the city centre, although we're designated as the city centre. We are not the city centre. I mean, you haven't got representation here from botanical gardens who do have problems with litter from this kind of behaviour when people buy it. I don't know where they buy it and take it into the gardens. Luckily, the garden shuts at eight, so they wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> but they do have a litter problem, don't they? Of course we have. Are you sort of woken in the early hours, late at night? Do you find your sleep <coughs> disturbed frequently, sort of on a weekly basis, would you say? Or? Very, very frequent. We are in contact with uh, the police, the council as well for noise uh, disturbances, and the universities, we, which actually started to act uh, uh, very dramatically, and uh, they're helping us. Uh, there is a, a student forum, uh, a student neighborhood forum, uh, set up with the both universities, and uh, because this is now a major, uh, a major thing for us. But if it's a major issue for the university, having a, a property like uh, premises like this with a license like this, when they are trying to prevent antisocial behaviour amongst their students, doesn't help them either. But they would not have had notice of this licensing to know because they don't live in the area, do they? So I don't think they're probably monitored, but. They are trying very hard to try and counteract some of these behaviours with the student forum and all sorts of other things. Because as you know, it's all yeah, representative yeah. there. Um, you sort of touched on, on what I was going to ask about the noise nuisance team um, and sort of 101. I appreciate that they're not mostly successful when you ring the Muddy, but in terms of the noise nuisance team, have you had occasions where people have come out and been able to attend? Or is it just something you keep a record of and, and pass on? Um, right, I, I, I actually represent the, our area and those meetings, so I know the subject very, very well. Uh, so nobody comes uh, during the incident because, as you know, it's impossible. Uh, I just need to say that actually my wife was actually assault, assaulted two years ago by students, yeah? so I had to call the police as well. So ju just to show you uh, the level of antisocial behavior we have. So what the university does, they, um, um, they establish if it is their students or the other university, yeah, because obviously, but we know because we welcome them when they come into our neighborhood, so we know roughly where, which university they are. They send uh, uh, a warning, and they got a system of warning whereby I think after three, they are struck off. And I think that two years ago, I think, please don't quote me, but between two and six have been struck off for different uh, uh, incidents from drugs or noise or whatever. Um, I, I want to be open and the letters from the university, they do work very well because the students nowadays pay a lot of money to go to university and they can't really afford to get uh, penalized or whatever. Having said that, there are, um, <laughs> Every year we got new student, students, so we're facing the problem every, every year. Uh, as you know, students are changing, change the houses uh, every year, and therefore it's, it's a, a permanent, permanent issue. Uh, I can also say that also the council with uh, their noise department, uh, uh, they send letters, yeah? And so uh, it's an area um, where we have established a good relationship with the council, police, and university. Uh, it took some 10 years to do that. Yeah, and... Uh, I think the point is we don't want to have to start again. We have, in, our area has improved. We give all, anybody who moves into our area gets a welcome leaflet given to them, not put through the door, get talked to and welcomed and told how we can help them, how they can join in. 
Um, some of them came to our last gathering. So we do, we're not anti that, but we've worked very hard to get our area improved <laughs> noise-wise and everything else. Therefore, we don't want anything to make it worse. And this has the potential to make it worse. Managed to get a bit of a balance at the minute. Um, and the concern is that a 24-hour licence might disrupt that. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Okay, that's been helpful. Thank you. Councillor Robson. Thank you, Chair. Um, just, just to, uh, to clarify a couple of points. Um, I've, I've checked the SPA um, opening times on Google and the licence registered on the licensing portal, whatever it is, and it's suggesting it runs 6 a.m. till midnight, not, not 24 hours. Is that, is that correct, or are you, are you seeing it saying it's open? <laughs> it appears to be opening longer than that. I'm sorry, but I don't go there. You don't go there now? <laughs> so I wouldn't know. I doubt it, but at midnight, they, you know, it gets worse, obviously. Gets at midnight, yes. Yeah, so obviously at midnight, some people are leaving, yeah. Um, and I suppose the other question is, uh, do, are you aware of um, problem behaviour at the 6 a.m. end, that people turning up at 6 a.m.? Because the last of the clubs in the city closes at 6 a.m., so I think people will roll out of that. Um, are you aware of problems at the six, uh, you know, people turning up at 6 a.m. to buy more alcohol in, yes. in a port? We're well, not buying yeah. more alcohol, because yeah. at the moment they can't. No. We're well, not going to uh, go all the way up to the spa no, from no. our area. Yeah. Yeah. And the further up you get of the road, there are less yes. younger people. Um, and even more residents, I mean, the spas opposite, um, the Woffington houses, which are um, for the old people. Yeah, yeah. seniors. <laughs> Is that the word we use now? <laughs> um, so, I think it's an Americanism, seniors, isn't it? It's, yeah. Yeah. So this probably would be the only place on the street with a 24 hour license if the spa hasn't got one. Yeah, okay. No, thank you. But um, it's, in response, yes, we get noise when the clubs turn out with the taxis arriving. Mm. Yes, yes. Of course, that yeah. creates a lot of noise. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, no more questions from this end. Mr. Ibrahim, if you have any, any questions of the representatives? Um, thank you. I'm, I'm grateful to the legal advisor with her questioning. I think it's quite answered quite a few of the questions that we would have had. Uh, may, may I just kindly ask... Um, Forgive me, I don't have the name. The lady has said she represents over 100 people. I, I understand there's only 13 complaints. Is that a neighbourhood watch we're referring to in terms of the 100 people? Um, we're not a neighbourhood watch. We're a community group. Um, mo several of the objections are from our community, but not all of them. Some of them are from other people. I don't know whether that helps. We don't go out patrolling the streets. We're not that kind of... Oh, sorry. Am I? So, sorry, did you hear that? Uh, we're, um, we're a community group. We welcome people. We have meetings to discuss antisocial behaviour, clearing streets, where we're going to the theatre. Do we fancy a meal out together? We're a whole range of community activities, including a gathering once a year. <coughs> Th thank you, but, but there isn't a hundred complaints directly which have been made. It's just people who have uh, perhaps expressed uh, their concern to yourself. Is that correct? Yes, that is very correct. Lots of people have been concerned, um, weren't probably fully aware of how you go about this system. It's not that easy. Um, well, it is once you know what you're doing. Um, I'm, I'm just picking up on Councillor Otten's question in, in terms of the SPA and the points that you made. Um, I haven't checked the licensing myself as well in terms of the, the vicinity. Um, my, my understanding is that it does run only till about midnight. Um, you, you said there have been associated problems with um, the SPA. And, and you also further on in your answers have said that you've not actually been and seen it uh, uh, later on at night yourself. Is it correct to say, are these things you've heard from other people in terms of the concerns um, or the nuisance concerns that you're having? 
Are you really saying that in order to sit here and say what I'm saying, I've got to go out and investigate whether antisocial behaviour is going on as a 70-year-old woman? I'm sorry, but yes, one of our group went and spoke to the staff in the spa. And um, that's what they told them. Obviously, the spa people won't say that, but the staff struggle. And I don't think one security person is going to help us at all. So, no, I haven't gone out and investigated at mid midnight. Do you really want me to? Uh, with the greatest respect, uh, it is just a question, just to clarify uh, the points that you've made in terms of the nuisance, and we're just trying to link it uh, as to what exactly um, the evidence is in, in terms of the nuisance that's uh, being caused. And, of course, it, it, it's... Um, it, it's not something that uh, the applicant or indeed anyone else is suggesting that you are to investigate. Uh, but as a complainant, if there's a position you're putting forward, then obviously it has to be backed up by tangible evidence. Uh, but you've stated you've heard that, but you've not seen it yourself. Can I also say this is not because of 418. We have objected to other licences and other planning permission that goes beyond 11 o'clock in our area. We do it every time. So it's not because we don't want licensing past 11 or half 11 or some days. So it's nothing personal or anything like that. It's what we do in our area. We don't object past Hunter's Bar. We don't object at the bottom for our bits. We object. So it's not personal. Uh, thank you. We have... Uh, we have no further questions of the uh, objectors. Thank you. Okay, then it's back to you. Over to you to give you the floor to uh, outline your application. Um, uh, thank you, Councillor Keogh. Um, may, may I formally um, introduce the applicant as well as Mr. Masoud Ibrahimi. Uh, Mr. Ibrahimi is a young entrepreneur. He is involved in uh, numerous other businesses um, within uh, Sheffield, in fact, within Ecclesall Road, where the current applicant, uh, application is concerned. He also um, is involved in a restaurant. It's called Lounge 418, uh, Lounge 418 which has an off-license as well, um, and approximately he has been running that for two years. He's got a completely clean record. There have been no complaints of, uh, of any type which have, been, which, which have been made to uh, the council or his operating conditions as a, uh, on license with a restaurant. Um, he is a gentleman who understands his obligations and responsibilities. This particular off license, uh, I, I believe he has been in possession of or owner of for the last three months or so. He has traded within these conditions, i.e. in terms of the off-license till I believe 11 o'clock. Um, again, there have been no issues of any nuisance or any complaints associated with the premises that Mr. Ibrahimi runs. Um, Mr. Ibrahimi is an individual who wants to work with the local community. This particular application is not adversarial. If there are concerns, um, if, if residents are uh, worried as to what would happen, uh, because quite frankly at times uh, the, the, uh, some owners can be um, dismissive of their uh, obligations, this particular gentleman is fully cooperative. Uh, in fact, he was informing me earlier this morning th that he's had several, since making this application, he has had several individuals come into his shop. Um, uh, and some have had concerns, they've spoken to him directly. He's given them uh, his ideas and how he would uh, manage his premises. Um, and, and they've been quite supportive of his applications. Um, as it's been rightly pointed out, there is no 24-hour uh, 
premises, licensed premises on Ecclesfield uh, uh, Road. Um, this is not to say that Mr. Ibrahimi wants to um, w w w wants to increase the uh, nuisance, which may um, be be occasionally associated with an off license. It wants to advance the point that this particular shop premises that he has, uh, it's quite different from a normal uh, off license in that it actually targets high clientele. The drinks that he's selling are exceptionally uh, on, on the premium side. Um, there are cigars which he is selling. There are, in fact, um, he is selling fruits and vegetables. So this is not your typical uh, off license where um, he would be looking to attract uh, the beer drinking, the late night antisocial behavior individuals. These, these are perhaps individuals who've had a late night, they're coming back, they want to pick up a bottle, they, they want to uh, go and socialize privately away from the premises. Um, so th this is not the general um, uh, nuisance crowd, as, as he would put it, that he's targeting. The 13 complaints that you have before you all allude to similar points to as um, the concerns that have been uh, expressed by um, uh, this morning by the objectors. Mr. Ibrahimi is live to that. He is, he is open to uh, the concerns of the local residents. In fact, it, it's an extended service that he wants to provide. Uh, it, it is a choice for people uh, to drink. Um, under law, there is no restriction as to what time they should drink. Um, and whether they have the accessibility of being able to um, what might be an in inconvenience to some people, uh, it's a convenience for others to perhaps pick up a drink at one o'clock at night uh, that they're returning from somewhere, or, or for whatever reason it is, they are socializing. G given the concerns <coughs> that are being expressed and given the nature of uh, Mr. Ibrahimi, he is extremely mindful that he wants the local residents on board. This is rightly, as rightly stated earlier on, it's an affluent area. Um, there is a large contingency of students uh, which make it a thriving local community uh, there. So some of the concerns which have been put forward today uh, and in the uh, objections um, are general nuisance issues, which by stopping a 24-hour license would not resolve those issues. Um, we, we don't actually have any evidence of um, what, what nuisance is caused at two o'clock at night uh, of antisocial behavior um, because there are no other off-licenses there. So if there is current antisocial behavior, then uh, the root causes of that perhaps lie somewhere else and not necessarily because someone can buy alcohol at two o'clock. Quite clearly that, that, that antisocial behavior, if it's related to alcohol, well, they're getting it from somewhere. Um, and, and they're certainly not at this moment in time getting that from Mr. Ibrahimi's premises because he doesn't trade at that time. Equally, it, it is not to negate the fact that um, it, it is only understandable and common sense, if, if he even uh, putting the legalistic language to one side, just taking a common sense, yes, there would be uh, an increase in um, customers at that time. Would, would they be the typical customers that would sit outside that premises? and get drunk. I think if you're buying a premium 120, 120 pound champagne bottle, I, I, I would be inclined to say that they're not gonna sit outside and cause a 
uh, a, a scene or nuisance. So that's the type of clientele that Mr. Ibrahimi is targeting. That's not to say that there, there aren't individuals that would cause a nuisance, but they would, in my respect and submission, be a nuisance regardless of whether the premises is, is given a license or not. Mr. Ibrahimi also is, is more than happy to have an extended license rather than a 24-hour license. And what that, what, what that basically, what, what he's um, suggesting is if for any reason, uh, and of course to, uh, to a certain point, to allay um, uh, the, the, the fears and concerns of local residents and perhaps the objectors, um, is that it, instead of a 24-hour license, he'll be more than happy uh, if it was done with a time estimate of up to 3 o'clock or 3 a.m. Um, th that would ensure that uh, the perception uh, or, or, or the concern amongst um, the objectors or the residents is a date that you know he's not going to be wanting people at six o'clock in the morning uh, or five o'clock in the morning to come and purchase drinks. The other element that has to be considered when looking at these applications are the financial implications. I think given Mr. Ibrahimi's nature and given that he's open to any conditions that uh, can legally and uh, justifiably be put on his license for him for him to accept that he is equally of, of the mind that financially it's very important for him to trade after 11 o'clock it is correct to say that up until 11 o'clock there are big players around the corner who take a large part of the market literally um, a few yards down from his premises in Sainsbury's. They sell alcohol till 11 o'clock. Um, his customer base between 11 and 3 that, that he's worked out and calculated would ensure that his business survives, that he keeps on paying his business rates. He currently has two employees and he would like to ensure that they are kept in employment. From his point of view, this is not, he is not a gentleman that is in it for greed. It, it, it's really about survival. It's to ensure that this business that he has taken on in the last three months flourishes and carries on trading. If his license is not extended or is maintained as it is, the last three months experience of running that particular premises has meant that Mr. Ibrahimi perhaps would either be cutting down on the staff or in the long run, it may not be a viable business for him to carry on. So there are serious financial implications for Mr. Ibrahimi, his staff, and the um, contribution that he would make uh, in his taxes, not not only for the uh, to the council, but but other uh, taxes that he would be paid with the VAT, the uh, um, PAY, and etc. So, so those are opportunities, uh, councillors, that an entrepreneur looks for in expanding his business. Um, it has to be reasonable. It has to be practical. But nothing which has been presented to you either today or in the complaints suggests that this would be a catastrophe for Ecclesall Road if his license was either 24 hours or extended with conditions. The other point to bear in mind is that he's not opening this premises on a side road. This is on a busy 24-hour main trunk road. There, there is already uh, traffic there. There is additional um, 
foot fall, which, which carries on by nature of it being a main road. The fact that Mr. Ibrahimi carries on or doesn't carry on trading will have little or no impact on the surroundings in, in terms of the antisocial behavior. Um, my understanding is that there are nightclubs on, Eccles, uh, on, on that particular road which stay open till two to three o'clock um, at night. Um, so if, if with conditions, if, even if he was allowed up until three o'clock, I, I, I think it would not change the dynamics of, or the social dynamics of the surrounding area. Um, on, on one of the complainants, I note that it's been put down that there would be an additional um, onslaught of delivery drivers uh, picking up alcohol and, and, and that in itself will uh, cause additional nuisance. Uh, Mr. Ibrahimi would like to put it on record that he has no intention of providing a delivery service. It's a purely an off license and customers would be coming in to pick up their liquor rather than um, for him to actually extend any kind of um, delivery. So there wouldn't be an, an, an influx of um, delivery drivers at that time or 24 hours. Um, Uh, of course, Mr. Ibrahimi, I mean, those are my submissions, uh, councillors. Uh, Mr. Ibrahimi or myself are more than happy to answer any further questions uh, that you may have. Okay, uh, thank you for your presentation. We will uh, allow opportunity for my colleagues to ask any questions. So, Councillor Horton. No, thank you, Chair. Thank you for that submission. Um, can I ask, what is the, what's the cheapest bottle or can of beer that you sell? Sorry, bottle of what? What is the cheapest bottle or can of beer that you sell? We have normal ciders and beers also. But we are, we're basically aiming for high-end clients. We have a juice machines. We, we bring in lounge into the shop, so we are very different. We, we sell sweets, we sell snacks. You say you don't sell beer? No, we do sell beer. What's the cheapest one that you sell? Probably... Two eighty nine, two twenty nine. Right, okay, and what's the cheapest bottle of wine? Nine ninety nine. And the cheapest bottle of spirits starts from what car? Just normal Smirnoffs. Right. Okay. Okay. I mean, so can you can you indulge me a little bit? Possibly. I I I don't know how to run an off license. Obviously, I, it's not my business. It's your business. You understand how it works. I was surprised when I saw this application that. Uh, somewhere selling high-end drinks we thought they would be able to sell those drinks at three in the morning because I, I always imagine that people who buy you know 120 pound bottles of champagne would buy that you know during daylight hours um, you know and drink it you know, drink it at home or whatever um, so I was baffled um, slightly by the application because quite possibly because I don't understand your business so I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the opportunity to explain it to me um, and when I heard that he'd only been running for three months, I thought, well, aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. somebody's moved in, doesn't quite buy the high-end stuff and wants to make a bit of money selling to uh, people turning out of clubs in the middle of the night, um, which won't be the high-end stuff, it'll be the, the cheaper stuff. So, I don't know, can you explain to me how this works as a business that the people wanting to spend large amounts on premium liquors will want to do it at three in the morning? Well, um, Eckeso Road is... One of the best streets in Sheffield is from business owners to sorry uh, to the richest people that live on that street. So we got lost and found, and they have their own customers, kind of people there. They're closed on the weekends. I believe they're closed at three or four o'clock. As when I finish lounge, I I could drive by. I see I see all the bars that close like after one two o'clock, and in my section, lost and. Lost and Found closes at 3 o'clock on the weekends. Monk Bar closes at 1 a.m. But these are licensed till 12, I mean 11. So if there's going to be no noise, it won't be from me. It will be from Lost and Found mainly. Okay, okay. Um, 
thank you for that. Uh, sorry, I haven't uh, it's, it's escaped me for the moment. I just have a final question. Um, yeah, no, sorry, yes. So, um, if somebody comes to your um, off license in a state of intoxication and wants to buy further alcohol, um, what do you do? If he's really drunk, I won't say. So, so the question is, I mean, <laughs> if you open a, an off license during the night at the time that the pubs and clubs are, are throwing out, what is the state of the customers you're likely to get? And how might they react to not being served? Students, I guess. Families. We sell fruits and veg, so people do come in for our juices, for fruits. So you won't be just drunk people. It's but at like two, three in the morning, you get families. Or, I mean, uh, yes, of course. Juices. Okay. okay. Sorry, may I just clarify a point for Councillor Otten? When the example is given of high-end premium uh, in, in terms of uh, um, purchasing a champagne bottle, it is a hypothetical question. It's uh, uh, a pause. It's about having choice. So, so individuals do have that choice. Um, but perhaps it might not be my daily routine to, to purchase something at 1 o'clock at night of that caliber, but I'm sure there are parties going on, I'm sure there are other individuals who would be inclined to purchase on, on the last minute. Um, so these are choices, these are preferences, and, and the example given is that's what he's targeting, uh, is, is, is target audiences in, in, in other uh, words. Uh, as, as far as whether um, he is, you know, rightly the concern for what I read in between the lines of your question is that there may be a concern that he's targeting people who are just spilling out of clubs at that time and, and they're going to come in and purchase liquor. Um, do, do correct me on this, uh, but my understanding is a lot of the clubs are based further down towards the city centre on Eccles uh, um, uh, on Road. Mr Ibrahim's shop is on the other end. It, it, it's not based on that side. So this is not where he's, he, his, his premises are based outside a club. They're going to just pour out to him. It's, it's literally next to a Sainsbury's. It's, it's, it's much further on that side. Um, and to, to ask a question, what type of person would come and purchase um, alcohol at 2 o'clock at night? Yes, it... it that there may be an element who are um, the nuisance causes, and, and that's the picture perhaps which comes in our mind initially. Uh, but reality is that um, th those are society's problems. And whilst Mr. Ibrahimi does not want to exacerbate that in any way, um, equally he cannot be held to be the root cause of those problems. So where those issues are, collectively as a society, we need to look at and, and, and see what other measures can be put in place. Not simply because of this one month uh, application, uh, which is gonna, going to contribute so much. Um, and, and I think empirically, no evidence has been prevented. I, I think rightly, residents are concerned. They've got anxieties, but its perception is subjective. There's really no objective evidence which has been provided in, in any of, uh, of this. So why is the concerns, and, and uh, Mr. Ibrahim would, would, has emphasized uh, to me that he wants to make the point that, that he's an individual who, who is uh, mindful. He's one who is understanding. So if, if there are concerns there, it's more than happy for any of the uh, complainants or the residents just pop in, have a look, uh, and he tells me that they would be pleasantly surprised. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Murphy. Uh, thank you for your uh, argument that you've put forward. I've just got a few questions. Um, you said that you've calculated a customer base uh, based on the hours from 11 till 3. How much trade are you anticipating arriving during that period? 
Well, I wouldn't know because I've not opened to know. But um, as Sainsbury's been next door to me, it does have a big impact on business. So they close at 11, so I think it'll be more better for me to survive after 11 o'clock. Um, sorry, so I was hoping to get some numbers as to anticipated trade. Um, what's your anticipated staffing level going to be between the hours of 11 till 3? Yeah, how, how many staff would you plan on having um, in the store between the hours of 11 and 3? It'll be myself and uh, someone else. Um, I'm, I have to say, much like Councillor Rotten, I'm struggling to see the argument you've put forward where this business model is going to be based upon um, people popping in to buy fruit, fresh fruit and vegetables and a bottle of Chateau Lafitte at 2am. Um, given that you have mentioned the large, vibrant student population twice now, and it does seem very likely to me that although you may experience a reasonable amount of trade to keep the business going, um, it, it was is probably not going to be at the higher end of the market. Um, you've owned the business for three months now. Was it a off license before you took it on? Nope. Just a bridal shop it was. Right. Um, and if you don't mind me asking, how long ago did you submit the application to change your licensing hours? Last month. Last month. So you had two out two months of yes. trading before you decided that this wasn't a viable business yeah. model for you. Um, that's it. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Nottage. Um, sir, always. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so to open later is to make the business viable. Is that purely based on the alcohol sales? What sort of percentage of the business is alcohol sales? Was what I was trying to get at. It's not always about alcohol with my shop. We sell fresh juices, which people are going crazy for them already, as no one's got the machines in the UK. But my fruit and veg, I've got people from XO Road coming in saying, you've done a great job, amazing job to this road. But So it's not always about alcohol for me. But to extend the licence, it is about the alcohol though, isn't it? As, as I said, yes, of yeah. course. As I said, Sainsbury's close at 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So it'll, it won't make me survive. And as I, I, I'm not surviving already. Have you had customers sort of approach you, you know, where people said, well, we should open later, earlier? Yes, every day. And in terms of healthcare workers in the area or, or other shift workers, do you have demand for earlier in the morning, say if people are finishing shifts at 5am and they want to pick up some alcohol on as, the way home? As Sainsbury's open 7am, so there's, there won't be any point in doing um, just while you were making your representations, Shim was helpfully dragged the licences off the system. Um, the internet was a little bit slow when Council often first asked the question. Um, so the spa does have a 24-hour alcohol licence. Um, <clears throat> and just to clarify in the area, there's also two off licences that open until 3am. So we've got 283, which is Seven Hills convenience and 375 which is drink stop that's just on the corner um, I think near Domino's it keeps changing that one doesn't it um, so that was just to provide a bit of context for what else is in the area sorry Mr. Abraham you said spa does close earlier but about um, in, in 10 11 by 11 o'clock it chooses to close yeah. earlier does it okay that's fair enough but they could if they wished essentially be operating 24 hours that they do have permission to do so I was looking yeah we said the same there are two yeah <laughs> a couple. Um, I, I'll, I'll just add uh, with uh, with the legal advisor's point that um, 
given what has been clarified quite clearly, there is precedence that there are um, off licence which run over the um, 11 o'clock period within the vicinity. Um, and and a, a question then arises, would this cause additional um, antisocial behaviour? Uh, well, following the logic that it's the same people, whether they go further up the road or whether they get it uh, further down the road, I, I don't think it's going to, in my res res respectful submission, it's not going to further um, exacerbate any antisocial behaviour problems. Thank you. Have you sort of witnessed any issues in the area? So I imagine even though you shut at 11, you're probably there a little bit later anyway, probably there a little bit earlier as well, opening up. It's a very live street. So there will be problems I'm down the road more further to, towards Seven Hills as they've got champs, Kettle Black closes late. But in my area and our lounges area, restaurant area, it's always calm. As it becomes more high people. I think that's it for me, thank you. Okay, uh, well, thanks everyone for the questions in your submissions. Um, I think any question I had has been answered or asked by the colleagues, so I have no questions myself. Um, Yes, yeah, sorry, the, we do have to give opportunity to residents, so the object is to, if you want to ask any questions of the applicant. Yes, they, they have no evidence, and neither do we, of what effect this would have, because we haven't, it hasn't happened. Um, can I ask you a couple of questions? One, how are you going to distinguish your clientele between high-end and not high-end, so you don't let the high-end ones in? And secondly, last time we met, we were in here discussing your restaurant, 418, and you said you would be there seven days a week when it was open. So I'd like to know how you can be in two places at once. Um, the last time you was here, it was my brother. We, are, we look very similar. So my brother take care of lounge, and I take care of the shop. And I have to be there at the shop, especially at night time, as we do sell high-end things. And only I, I would be able to control the thing. So how are you going to distinguish your customers so you don't let, only let high-end people in? Well, sorry, if I may just clarify that, at no point has it been said that you will be filtering customers and saying high-end customers are coming in only. The, the, the point was a generic one on the basis um, that um, in, in large um, he, he would be looking to market his services to those uh, in, 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 in uh, inverted asterisks uh, high-end clients i.e. affluent clients uh, but there is certainly no suggestion that he would have uh, some kind of filtration system and, and say she shows your wage slip before you can come in and shows you affluent. Certainly, uh, th there's no such thing. Can I also clarify, as a Botanical Gate Community Association, we only concern ourselves with the part of Ecclesville Road nearest us. So we do not object to the ones that are way at the bottom. That would be for somebody else. And some of those licenses may be quite historic. <coughs> oh, and we pay our taxes too. They are far away from us. Um, the, the other that the gentleman here have mentioned. Um, I don't think there is a club in Eccles or Rodo where we live, like it was mentioned before. And during the night, actually, Eccles or Rodo, or that part, it is actually very quiet because everybody's shut. So it's not very vibrant at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. I haven't seen any family at 5 o'clock in the morning doing their shop, doing their shopping with vegetable or an orange juice. Maybe, um, maybe it's me, but I haven't seen any yet. No. And there is a Tesco's, of course, which is open from 7 till 11, which is even bigger than the Sainsbury's. 
sorry, perhaps families haven't been seen at three o'clock because there is no precedence yet. Okay, uh, if this, Sam, back to you again. Sorry, um, it was actually prompted by you. So you're not the DPS for this premises? No, are you DPS at 418 Lounge? And for 287 Eccles Hall Road, would you be DPS for that? They're all your brothers. He's the DPS at Lounge 418 and then they're just at Bournemouth Road. Okay, so the, the application that's in for 287, would you be DPS for that one? No, he's my brother. And so you've got three brothers? No. My brother is dealing with lounges and then the new store. Okay, so he'll be DPS of both? Yes. Okay. So how often is the DPS on site at this shop that we're here for today? He works mostly 24-7 every day. Not 24-7, but every day. And are you on site with him as well? Or? Yeah, I'm going, yeah. So would you? is the intention that you would take the later hours yes and he would do the day okay thank you okay uh, no more questions uh, I'm going to come back to you to allow you to uh, uh, sum up your application and add anything else you want to add uh, uh, thank, thank you councillor uh, I, I think I've made substantial submissions and I'm not going to uh, take councillors further um, time in in, in, in making uh, a protracted submission. In, in short, in, in, in conclusion, um, this is a very genuine individual. He's making an application on, on the basis that he understands his roles, his obligations. He's more than happy uh, for um, the, the, the uh, license to have conditions attached to it, and he will deliver according to whatever uh, he's asked of. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you again for coming and making your uh, submissions and to the objectives as well. We are going to go into private session, but before we do that, we're just going to ask the um, license officer to give us the options available to us. Thank you, Chair. The options open to the committee are one, to vary the premises license in the terms requested, two, to vary the premises license with conditions, and three, to reject the whole or part of the application. Thank you. Thank you, Shinda. Okay, so we will now ask you to leave. You can wait uh, in the in the room uh, and come back, or we can let you know the outcomes afterwards. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks uh, once again, everyone, for coming in and making your submissions this morning. We have uh, deliberated and we have come to a decision, and we have decided to refuse the application on the grounds that it would undermine the licensing objectives, namely the prevention of crime and disorder and public nuisance. Which, as I noticed, it will set out all the evidence members considered, how they came to the decision and setting out what the decision is. Uh, the residents and everyone that objected in writing will also receive a copy of that notice. Um, so should you appeal and it proceeds to magistrates court, we'll sit exactly as members have done today and consider all the evidence before them at that time and they can either uphold the decision or substitute it for their own. But obviously your solicitor will be able to advise you on that should you wish to proceed. Thank you both and thank you both for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.